Without further ado, let me introduce Stephen Byrne and Austin C. Howe. They're going to be talking about uh, what was the to uh, the topic is work and play in Metal Gear. <laughs> no, no. I think you just combined like four of our panels. I think I did too. <laughs> no, uh, no. Next, that's, next uh... year. That's next year. <laughs> yeah, hit me up with the uh, the title of the panel. What is it? A uh, Artist... playful discussion of capitalism and games, or something like that. Uh, uh, work and games. There you go. Hey, it wasn't too games. far off. <laughs> playful just, discussion. Just because it involves me doesn't mean that Metal Gear is inherently there. Um, <laughs> but to introduce, for everyone who doesn't know Stephen Byrne, um, he has does his work on Destructoid and Gameranks and Pop Matters and Unwinnable. All of the uh, Awesome publications around the web. Shout uh, out to Unwinnable. Big ups yeah. to them for getting their Kickstarter. They got their Kickstarter funding. Big ups. Last day too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, people were worried. Yep. People thought that wasn't going to happen. We put it, pulled it down to the wire. Um, but he's a freelance uh, writer and a game designer. Focuses on video games as cultural texts. And so that's super important to me. So without further ado, please, Austin, take it away. So hi, I'm Austin, and uh, I'm here with Stephen Byrne, and uh, you already heard about all of the places that he writes, and uh, today we're having a discussion called it The Playful Discussion of Working Games, sorry to be redundant, uh, and what we, what we wanted to focus on is we wanted, kind of, we wanted to kind of expand a discussion that we were having on Twitter about an article that Steve, Stephen wrote recently about uh, RPGs uh, as, representations of, as representation of, of capitalism, so to speak. So, Stephen, how about you go ahead and introduce basically your article and what the main point of it was. And I'll go ahead and post it in chat for you all, too. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, I, I don't want to be contradicting you right off the bat, but uh, it could because a lot of people... It's not so much RPGs in capitalism, it's just kind of a, a design mechanic, a design archetype that's that's common in RPGs, but it, it's kind of blossomed out in recent years. As, as, Rather, as, you the, know, the it's leveling in, system in RPGs. It, it's yeah. specifically oh, the, the leveling yeah. up, because um, if I say leveling up and people say that's in RPGs, then people will be interpreting me to say, oh, RPGs are capitalist, or oh, video games are capitalist, or something like that, which which isn't, well, it's not what I'm saying. So if, you, if you want to say that, that's cool and everything, but... Um, uh, don't put it on me because that's scary. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, I wrote this article on Monday and Tuesday, and I finished it on Wednesday and put it up. And then people read it; and they seemed to like it. And uh, where was that? I'm at? here to talk about it. It was just on my blog. It's called Normally Rascal. Normally Rascal. It's a WordPress. Yeah. yeah. It's in the chat. Two random words I picked out of a, a book or some shit. Don't know what it means, but whatever. Um. So it was about. It was called Level Ninety Nine Cap. Level 99 capitalists, I've got a tab open just so I mm -hmm. hadn't read it because uh, I'm scared to. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, go on. No? Okay. No, so sorry, I wrote yeah, that. And other people wrote, read it and they seemed to like it. So, some people wrote things in response. So, uh, what that article was was this uh, I started off talking about how. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, as well as having just narrative tropes and shit like that. Sorry, I shouldn't be swearing and stuff like that. Uh, you've also got um, mechanics and and systems and and uh, design archetypes in games that are also inherently political, as well as just uh, storylines that inherently inherently political. Like, um, what would be an inherently inherently political storyline? Storyline about solid. a political revolution. There you go. There's one. It was, it was actually like, like uh, the one that happened in Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Don't get me into Bioshock Infinite. I'll be talking about. All right. That. Yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not derail here. The example I used in uh, in the article was Homefront because the Homefront developers, if if you remember Homefront, it was a game where the Koreans invade Americans and you play as uh, an American soldier in the uprising. Homefront Two is going to be more of that, and the developers, uh, Crytek, Nottingham, I think, they said that they do, they specifically did not want to make it. Uh, about the politics. They didn't want to make a political game, they just wanted to make a playground, you know? Uh, why they picked Homefront in order to have that setting, I'm not sure. Um, but, like, developing on from this, it's not just that specific settings are political, but also mechanics can be political. They, they, they inherently carry this kind of latent narrative, you know? So the, the example I used was leveling up. The, pro the process of, of leveling up in games, you're probably familiar with. What did I say? I said, it is loosely, I'll just pull up the quote, Loosely, it is, sorry, leveling up usually constitutes this. As the player achieves ludic goals, they're rewarded with points or toys to increase their proficiency at completing future ludic goals. 
which is just a really it's a it's a boring sentence but it's it's as best as i can do to keep things very very simple it's a very very simple uh try, I, I try to keep it general in order to be like accessible to other people you know shit like that of course um, and i compare this to the process in capitalism specifically uh the, the labor process in capitalism where where uh, labor is exchanged for 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 money for wealth you know um which is and a, then money is exchanged for products yeah and uh, and then products are exchanged for well, survival essentially like food or or uh you know you you watch tv you, you just essentially live through them and then you go back to work the next day and so on and so on and so on and you're just supposed to sit in that loop and be happy while you know people get rich probably not you but maybe you uh get rich and society boils on you know it's a it, it it's a it's it's capitalism that's kind of it you know so so basically what so so you're kind of saying is that by inherently by always having you know uh, a certain amount of work equal a certain amount of reward in ludic sense that uh it's endorsing certain traditional thoughts that are endorsed in capitalism that the amount of work that you put into a system is how much reward you'll get out of it which for those living under a capitalist system isn't always true and for frankly usually isn't true um kind of but it's it's a it's a slight slightly bit different than that because it tends towards uh, attributing um it, sorry it, it, the rewards specifically are framed as a form of wealth um a, yes. for, a form of uh well i suppose wealth will just do because if, if i want to keep it general um and you're supposed to gather all this wealth and store it like like a like a bank you know you're, you're supposed to be your own bank but whatever um it's 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 not about playing a game and having a cutscene and the cutscene is really enjoyable maybe it's super cool and it sounds i'll i'll, I'll swish and and it's just a lovely game to play, uh, which which is itself a reward. You know, when you play Journey, floating through the air is is a lovely aesthetic reward for uh, for having played through the whole game and gotten your scarf that long. Um, whereas in leveling up, the reward is being able to collect all this XP and then spend it on uh, on new on new toys, on on a stronger character or new abilities. Like, it, new abilities. Uh, sorry, when I, when I say toys, I, I kind of mean like skills, powers, weapons, basically everything else that isn't tied into the inherent capacity of your character, like their strength and their dex and their 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 ints and shit like that. Sorry, swearing. Uh, I'm Irish, sorry, forgive me. Um, where was I? Yes. So in RPGs, it's 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 all about uh, boosting up boosting up your uh, your stats, your character stats, your 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 party member stats um while while collecting uh, powers and, and skills and toys in other games like in call of duty you've got um you've got leveling up where you where you collect uh you collect weapons and abilities for these weapons and uh, attachments and everything um and and skills like silent footsteps and juggernaut and and danger close and you can you get mines and everything, and this is all true leveling up. It's like Call of Duty. Call of Duty is mad for it because there's if you, if you start a, a if you if you start a new game with Call of Duty and go into the multiplayer, there'll be level seventy people just just nuking you. You know, it's it's, it's madness. Um, so I'm I'm getting so far ahead of myself here. I haven't even talked. And about actually, the main thing. Uh, and actually, it's worth that's that's especially interesting because it kind of reflects uh, class in a real life system because the people. Who are level seventy ahead of you, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. and you're just level two because you bought the game three months later. Are the people? Those are the people who were able to buy the game on day one. Yeah. So you know, take that to mean what you will about what the game cost and who can afford it and when they can afford it. You know, yeah. expendable, expendable income, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I suppose I should attribute the uh, the cycle of leveling up and getting experience and toys and all that in uh, more closely to the. The, the capitalist cycle of of exchanging labor for wealth should i or hmm i'll go into it i'll go into it a small bit just just uh just in case but it's i i'm not an economic e economist i'm not a uh, a political theorist you know i I'm, I'm not an academic in these regards so i didn't want to go too deep into it in that regard because that's 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 beyond me i'll leave to other people and i, I want to keep it uh, general enough in order to be accessible, in order to be applied to various different circumstances and all this. 
So my level of understanding of the economics of capitalism is very, very simplified um, as, as represented by the articles. Um, so I say, where is this? So I'll just pull up another quote. Capitalism is founded, oh, it's a terrible sentence. Capitalism is founded upon an exchange of labor for wealth, where labor is the product of a laborer to be bought and used by others in pursuit of their own wealth. Um, it's a dreadful sentence, but I, I kind of need to put it in anyway, because it's it, uh, it's super, super simplified kind of understanding of capitalism, but it'll do for the it'll do for the purpose of, of making a comparison between that and leveling up. So what I'm saying in this article is that or what I'm saying in general is that um, we'll take the example of a Final Fantasy game. In, in Final Fantasy, you go around the map, you go around the levels and you fight monsters, bad guys, um, and you get XP. And XP is used and by money. the characters and, and money and items and materia or, or powers or whatever else, you know, limit breaks. You, you get all these sorts of uh, ludic rewards that, that feed back into um, the, the, the combat. Um, so as you, as you go through the combat, you're getting better at going through the combat. And what I say is combat represents kind of labor in this regard. And XP and all the other toys and all that business represents wealth. Um, but it's, it's wealth that is uh, exchangeable only in terms of the, uh, the ludic use Excuse me. that you can get out of it by repeating the labor process. Um, there's, there's, there, there are other rewards, but there's, there's kind of a design mentality of if it, it has to be, if, if, if an action or a thing in a game doesn't have a mechanical or systemic um, function, it's, it's inert, it's pointless. Uh, right. This, this yeah, is what games, I think some designers think. Yeah. Um, if, it, if, it isn't, if it isn't enough of a toy, then why would I care? If it's pretty and everything, grand, but I want it to be a toy. Um, which, you know, I, I, I'm not much for that, but that, that being said, I do like games some games where that happens, I'm just not a fan of the mentality. But um, so there you've got the labor process in a Final Fantasy game where you go through combat and you um, you get your you get your rewards. And you fight, it, it's you get XP, you get money, you buy weapons, yeah. you gain new abilities, you gain new limit breaks, new spells, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those things make you better at fighting, which is the game's labor process, which yeah. earns you more rewards. And the and uh, as this happens, you become uh, unexplainably unexplainably rich and powerful. You no, know? mm -hmm. powerful because... in terms of the game. Powerful in terms of the game sense, not as a social status. Yeah, well, experience points are so framed because they are supposed to represent your experience or your character's experience at a certain task. In this case, you know, killing monsters, yep, stuff like that. Um, rather than actual experience in terms of killing monsters, which is what I suppose you as a player get. So after you've killed, after you've been killing monsters for forty hours, and you're probably bored of it. You're well experienced at it, but you still need to get more and more experience points in order to keep progressing in the game. You know, and um, it's right. just a way to to quantify. Uh, the experience that the character, and I suppose that you, by virtue of the character, are getting in order to um, use it at intervals for, kind of for for these rewards that represent your wealth, you know, plus one strength, plus one int, you know, and you can use your strength and you can use your int for, um, in Final Fantasy games, for, for, for buffing your stats, sorry, your, your, uh, your, your weapons and all this, for other games like Demon Souls, for unlocking, for, for gaining access to various weapons, for swords or spells, uh, or other things, but I won't get too much into that now because it's it it's kind of. I'll 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 be talking about that again later. Yeah. So, uh, so so the other thing is uh, uh and and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to make you angry or anything. I'm just going with uh you know what her. basically what's what someone in the chat asked is that so so why why is this bad to you? Oh right. Well, you know. It, it's not that it's bad so much. It's 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 interesting. It can be used for for bad purposes, insofar as like a sexist trope can be used for bad purposes. Also, because capitalism is kind of well, it's a little bit evil, isn't it? You know, the way it kind of promotes prosperity for the rich people and for everybody else, it kind of just keeps people in their place. You know, uh, right. especially them poor people who are well, they're just they're just disregarded by society. Um, if they're if they're not valuable enough as a labor force, then why do I care? Um, 
So in, in terms of, what was I going to say? I had to tip my tongue just a second ago. To kind of add a little bit, if I can step in, uh, about mm -hmm. the like those kind of perceived evils of capitalism is that games especially uh, are seated in a way where you're doing work to grow and that it kind of creates this perceived analogy of like the American dream where if you work hard enough, you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps and yeah. you can succeed in life and it's a big win. And in real life, we find out that's not necessarily what happens. That's what I wanted yeah. to talk about. That's what, I, but, that's what I wanted to jump into was that, was that it's, where, it's a represent... Sorry, go ahead. It's, it's a nice... It's yeah. a, it, it, it kind of serves as a capitalist fantasy because you can have this underdog character like in the Infamous games, this... this uh, this rugged outsider, you know, who you still have to level up and become super powerful. Uh -huh. So, so through this process, you're essentially sitting in your living room, going through the the capitalist cycles that you can't go through in the real world because you know exactly. society is right. is difficult, and because you can't you can't uh, you can't get a promotion or you can't um, I don't know pay your rent or whatever. But yeah. in the video game, it's easy enough to do. You just need to grind through it, and eventually you'll feel powerful enough. It makes you feel good about yourself because you're achieving something in game. That you mm -hmm. feel like you're so it creates a it you feel like it creates a false construct or a false reality. Uh, yeah. but you can play it out in games, and so you kind of it's, it's are, escapism. Exactly, it's a lovely and, capitalist. But it's escapism. a weird I want kind to, of escapism. Right? I got a quote. I got a quote for this too. Keep talking for a second while I pull it up. Sure. Uh, nice. That idea of escapism is like that's huge in video games. But yeah. What are you escaping into if it's another capitalist fantasy? Exactly, which is why I describe this as uh, specifically the whole leveling up cycle. It's capitalist propaganda because it's Ooh, trying to get you spicy. to enjoy the capitalism cycle, right? Um, but it's still putting on you all those ideologies from the the, the culture that you live in, which is probably capitalist. But I, I'm gen I'm generalizing a lot here. Um, I'm I'm supposing that you do play games for escapism. Uh, you you enjoy the leveling up process. Maybe you don't. It's also designed um, to be enjoyable, so there's is, some manipulation yeah. going on in there. Yeah, especially in okay. later games. Because sorry, go on. So that's actually so that's a good jumping point. Yeah, as this is the, the thing is is that games don't show us an accurate. A lot of games don't show us an accurate representation of capitalism or how it actually affects people. It sells us the fantasy of what capitalism is trying to sell us, which is that work equals reward, and that if you work hard, you'll be well rewarded, and that sort of thing. So it sells the fantasy of like upward mobility for everyone, regardless of the fact that upward mobility for everyone doesn't actually exist. Which gives exactly. me a great, which gives me a great bridge into a quote. This is a quote from Yuji Horii, the uh, the creator of the Dragon Quest series. Which, ah, yes. oh, nice. In my in up. my mind, Indeed. in my mind, is the most infamously grind heavy series of video games. Uh, is, or at least the most infamously grind-heavy series of Japanese role-playing games. And this is what he had to say, which is that, in the real world, there are so many difficulties people are facing. Sometimes there are no rewards. At least in the game, we want to make sure that we will be that they will be rewarded for working hard. That's a very traditional thing for us, referring to the Japanese. And uh, the quote goes on. Hold on a second. Work away. In Japanese style, you have to try, 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 try. And then in, at the end, you can finally get a reward. It, Dragon Quest, is like climbing up a steep mountain. You have to keep climbing, 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 climbing. And then at the end, you finally get to the top of the mountain and you see the beautiful view. Mm -hmm. So that's, so that's, it's kind of a, it's kind of, uh, he's, he's kind of admitting here that the, ja that the design philosophy he's applying to this game is very traditionally Japanese, but that he's also selling a kind of fantasy where these traditional thoughts actually accurately reflect a you know accurately reflect in the world as opposed to what he admitted earlier in the quote which is that they don't always and in our worldview and what we're basically saying is that they don't usually mm. and so that gives me that that always that always has given me an interesting thought because it's uh uh it, it's interesting to consider how I mean, and we're just repeating the point here. How how these systems are again representations of the fantasy that capitalism wants to sell us, rather than the accurate reality of how people experience life under the system. Uh, but of course, the thing about that being that, um, especially in the JRPG genre, which I have some knowledge of at least, um, it, the thing about it being that there are some systems that that sell that have the entire fantasy of capitalism being the being the central focus 
you know, like mm-hmm. there's the Dragon Quest series, which is like by far the most conservative, which is especially worth noting because like religion also plays an important part in Dragon Quest and there tends to be like traditional families in Dragon Quest and traditional gender roles and that sort of thing. But it's worth noting, especially when games tend to, I would say, subversively present a more accurate picture of capitalism. And that's what happens more as the genre grows is you start to see games, especially like uh, the classic example to me being Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, that accurately represent a system where you can do work, but that work has limited rewards. Rewards. and uh, and that that work that work has ultimately limited rewards because there's only so much work you can do that actually moves you up and then you know as you move up there just becomes more and more challenges to, for people to keep moving up and there's also uh, there's also plenty of games where like like breath of fire dragon quarter where the method to success is to know about the game already. Is to is to look it up. Is to is to have somebody that played it before to tell you about it. And therefore, it kind of reflects what's true in in actual capitalist societies that the people who get ahead are the people who know the shortcuts, or the people who have the kind of like secret things boosting them up that help them, like being white, being rich, having act having really easy to access to upper education or good public education, or uh, or just living in an area where there are good economic opportunities, where there are jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Which isn't you know those things are incredible unequal across capitalist systems in all countries so sorry that was a big that was a big mum you know ramble no, of thought question. but yeah and so, 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 so that's the thing is, is i was always uh i was always interested in the idea of of games that kind of uh maybe there are games that can eventually present the system in a kind of subverted way to where you're uh uh, uh actually let me let me kill that sentence because i don't know where i was going with that um it's no, it's interesting no. It, it's it's interesting to me the idea that that certain games, uh, you know, they, they they these these systems all represent a kind of capitalist uh, uh, a way of representing the relationship between work and reward. It's just that some games have a more honest picture, I think. Yeah, and other games um, contextualize it within the within the broader narrative to criticize it, which I'm, I'm sure we'll be talking about later with regards to Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII, and I suppose Demon Souls in a little way. But I suppose that's up to interpretation as well. Um, but an interesting thing I'd like to note about the uh, about about leveling up, where you go around and you kill the you kill the baddies, you kill the monsters, and you get the XP out of them, is it's a tremendously dehumanizing process of uh, of of the things that you're fighting, of the things that are the 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 I, I don't know what the what the technical term is, the things you get your wealth from. You just extract it. You see them and you go for them and and uh, you gobble them up, you know. I, 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 I say, I say in the article, it's like ingesting, ingesting food for nourishment, which is a, which is a tremendously clinical way of describing something that's just loveless gluttony, and that's kind of what capitalism represents to me. And like this is okay, um, and these are the paradigms of meritocracy. Which is what you're mentioning, Austin. Uh, I note in the chat it's called meritocracy, right? This, this idea that those who are successful deserve their success, mm-hmm. which isn't true, right? People are successful um, because of privilege, um, because of inheritance, um, because of status, right? That's um, yeah, not yeah. part of it. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's the social yeah. part of it. Excuse me, not the yeah, economic exactly. part. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it it all kind of intertwines. It, it's just like it's just a lot of it's just a really, really it's just a really interesting thing. I, I just so, so I I feel like it's always this thing where we're under capitalist system. It's the understanding of those um of of how of how can the processes which aren't beneficial to us, by the way. This is the idea. This is this is this is what what you know what what folks old economist folks in the eighteen hundreds would, would say, right? Which is that which is that we labor, but we don't we don't get the fruits of that labor. I work on a point. I work on a pot. I sit there in a factory and I work on a little thing, but I don't get to enjoy the result of that. It just goes to somewhere else, right? Um, and this is understanding that that even in games, um, this is what this is what Lana Polanski is. This is what I think is so cool is, is the idea that that games, a lot of games, attempt to perfect capitalist systems. It's it's the idea of what, what, yeah. what the fan, the fantasy that it yep. provides is, is inherently the idea that this can work when it doesn't. It's contradictory, right? Capitalism yeah. is not a fun, it, doesn't, it doesn't function properly. It's not it's not a working social system. But in games, you can create it as a working social system. This is what Lana Polanski asserts, right? Which is that which is that this is the precise fantasy that they have, right? Which yeah. is that here here in video games, I can perfect um, the idea of meritocracy, even though it doesn't work in real life, right? Um, and that's that's like that's like the weird spin on it. Like, that's what I'm thinking particularly. So I want to bring. No, I, I think that's perfectly good. Sorry. Yeah. I want to add to that with uh, coming back to the ideas of play as well, uh, because that's what the panel is about. On they're taking the playful side of capitalism. Um, 
And the ideas and theories of play usually involve uh, this kind of idea where the player themselves can uh, can escape or come back into this idea of like a real life space versus a play space. So like uh, you have this whoever's idea. typing. Oh, that's Steven. Uh, anyway, short idea. Um, so you have play. The player inside of that play can always leave play. That's just a normal theory working mm -hmm. of play, right? And games especially, is that you have a game space and you can leave that game space. You can leave your game. The player themselves are not responsible for the capitalist system. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if that's a part of why we're totally fine with jumping in, grinding a little bit in World of Warcraft, and then popping back out. Because we're not responsible for the system afterwards. And we can just mm -hmm. kind of have this fleeting moment of play. That's an interesting question. It's it's uh you, so the idea being that you're okay with uh, basically the system becomes inert once you leave it. Something like something that, like yeah. that. Does it? Yeah. Uh, because well, well, I'm not sure if an M an, 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 MMO, an MMO is necessarily the best example of that because there's a world that exists with other players in it. It might be yeah. a better example. And I have no experience social... playing MMOs for the okay. record. <laughs> but there is a social world in it as well. Uh, that you're also leaving, but the grinding systems, once you leave them, even to play some other part of World of Warcraft, you've left them. They're gone. They're not a problem that you have to deal with ever again. So labor doesn't have a time limit. That's if true. that's if that's if that's a good way of saying that's it. And there's point. also and, 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 point, right? Well, well, well you're, I mean, you're I mean, not I mean, scheduled for a shift of grinding. You do it when you please, and you yeah. do it for as long as you want. I grind when I want to. Damn it. <laughs> Which is why there's this whole thing of loving the grind or hating the grind. A few years ago, it was, oh, I hate the grind in JRPGs. And then there was a research and it's, oh, the grind is lovely. It's wonderful. It's just nice to kind of settle into so, you know, so, when you come home so from work. I, I, I guess the, the, the thing with me is that I always, I always, get, I always get, get, get skeptical at assertions of our own freedom. Um, and that's because of various, because of incredibly <laughs> yeah. like that. But I mean, I, I'm always skeptical of assertions of, okay, well, this thing makes us more free because I can do it on my options, right? But there are always forces around. So, so I feel like when, when asking, well, um, we can take it, go out anytime we can. Um, I think it's worth noting what what are what are the reasons why we go in? Why why what are the reasons why we wouldn't actually come out? And 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 it, because I, I feel I feel like I feel like this thing about we can leave anytime we can um, seems to seems to have a hole in the sense of of this you know the thing of, of a free will right? Is that do we do everything on our own will? Are we coerced into things? Oh shit! Um, are we coerced into things outside of our own control? Um, are we? I mean, if you if you think if you think about that comes about back the to ideas the that themes, are, right? Well, the yeah, themes well, I mean, of all it, the RPGs where it's all existential about being able to free yourself. <laughs> Right? It, right, right. Well, that's because. Sorry. Right, okay. So let me finish, and then I kind of yeah. want the floor for a minute. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, well, I mean, I mean, if we think about something like. Something outside of games, somewhat, you know, in, in the sense of just something general to consumerism. Do, 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 do I go? Do I go buy products, particularly because, like, because you know, I'm doing it on my own will, or do I buy products because the, the, I watched TV and it said that it would make me cool in front of my friends? I said, mm -hmm. okay, I'll go buy it, right? Like, like there are justifications around things. So, so, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of the assertion of will and freedom, particularly in play, and a lot. I, I feel like there's a lot of coercion going around. I think it's worth looking at of, of what a main course would do. What are the justifications of me being here? Um, which is in itself this idea that that we want games that that encourage self awareness um and capitalism don't want us to be self aware right this is this is the point right and this, yeah. this is why meritocracy exists right meritocracy is a fallacy but but it, it's 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 a thing that that allows us to 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 be exploited particularly and think that exploitation is okay when it's not right um so so in that sense it's always this idea that 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 when we play a lot of these games a lot of games that that would be you know in a general kind of you know fleeting sort of pain big brush sense, you know, or okay, they're capitalist games, quote unquote, I don't know what that means, I'm just trying to you know, yeah. be quick with it, um, but yeah. I mean, in the sense of this is the idea of, do, do these games encourage us to be self-aware of what we're doing? Or are, are they just coercing us into more of very small short-term feedbacks of things? And is that healthy? And and, 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 and does that really help? We, we can sit there and say, well, I accumulate something for myself. We, we can argue that, well, um, the capitalist games are okay, because in a sense here, I am actually taking the fruits of my labor. I go around and I kill a boss or, you know, an MMO or something, and I get the money out of it. But then we look back and say, okay, well, what is this really doing for me? Are these things actually really empty when we think about it? We said, we're not actually gaining much at all. But 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 but, but, but when, we, when we look outside, we realize, okay, well, the people who make this game, the people who make profit of this game, are getting a lot from my time that I'm putting into this. And it seems like I'm getting some some sort of illusion that there's something, I'm getting something from it, but am I? 
are we, are we, are we getting something for, from, from the hours and hours and times that we put into this? And well, I think that's an important Steven, question. Steven, I, I know I said I wanted the floor, but you're the, you know, uh, you go ahead and talk if you have a response. Oh, that's to that. totally fine. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a good point. And I think the answer is, well, yeah, yes, it's, it's real. It's substantial. And even if, even if you are just, you know, enjoying the grind and going through the capitalist motion, um, well, you're still enjoying it as a player. You're still getting something out of it, even if after six hours of grinding through, you turn off the game and you realize, what the hell have I done with my life? <laughs> okay, actually, at that, the time you were playing me... it, you were enjoying it. Yeah. And that, that's, that's a valuable experience in some form. Mm -hmm. you know? that gives I don't me mean to diminish to that. Off. No, I understand that, what you mean. That, get, that gives me a good point to jump off, which is that, speaking again from personal experience, and again focusing on, on the Japanese role-playing games, which I wish I had more experience with the Western stuff and with the MMOs, because those are great things to talk about as well. But I, I um, really appreciate your experience in the Japanese role-playing game stuff, though, because, because <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, so it's super complimentary, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I think the thing to me is when I play RPGs, uh, I, I'm often frustrated with the ones that I don't think have a very satisfying narrative, because it's just... Kind of like, uh, for there was a period for a there was a period for a long time where I openly admitted that there was a lot about that that the systems of RPGs weren't very enjoyable to me. Um, but I often came to you know I'm here for the story, as some people say, mm -hmm. as yeah. uh, you know, um, you know. So that was so that was um, you know it was it wasn't until it wasn't until years later that I really learned how to enjoy RPGs just for their systems, and that was honestly after I became a game critic because I could start to see past the surface, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's um, Zolani. You're echoing a little bit, just telling you. Oh, okay. um, I'll, I'll mute myself. In the narrative thing, I think thing about it is is uh, the, um, are we? Um, what was the question? The question is, are we? Uh, you know, are we? Are we doing this? Are we being coerced into it, or are we getting anything out of it, or are we? You know, doing it of our own volition. I, I think um, it's it's the answer is much in the same line as are we are we complicit in in enjoying sexist media but at the same time sexist media is so prolific it's it, it's ubiquitous uh, that is true the whole but, aspect but the, of the of the what do you call it uh, dance and stress for one thing it's not consciously put out there by a lot of authors it's just subconsciously because they're it's 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 a uh, the culture says it's just a thing you put in why wouldn't you put it in so you put it in um and when you go to the movies it's probably there because you can't escape it. Just, just it's very difficult to escape. And that, it's the same thing with uh, with leveling up. It's not just RPGs anymore. It's it's gone into all all sorts of aspects. Batman does it. Call of Duty does it. Um, go, outside, of right. go outside. Go yeah, outside. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've so, been to pirouette a little bit. Uh, I've been playing during while we were talking all of these leveling up guides on YouTube. And yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've appreciated it's that. It's actually, actually been kind of a really nice montage of like all of the ways that people game capitalist systems <clears throat> for their own, for their fastest way to get to some kind of perceived endpoint. Is it to reach the end of the game or is it to make money, like real money in the real world? Well, uh, there's also the for YouTube Diablo, side of it, maybe. For sure. <laughs> He's been showing stuff like Dark Souls, stuff like FF9, so a lot of those games only move towards ludic or narrative events. Okay, grand, grand. But there's also like, I know, I know the there's... person's uploading these to YouTube too, so they also individually have a, an own economic uh, end to uploading a well reversed, uh, well researched guide to leveling up. But yeah, okay. So, um, so the thing was, uh, I was going back to it is that the thing I started with was that I I, I hate I hated playing games that I uh, RPGs that I didn't think think had satisfying stories. I think that's especially because, like I said earlier, that these games are so existential. I think the thing about it is that the idea that is often sold in these games is that by moving through enough of these systems at uh, at some point you can kind of uh, well one is that you achieve some grand narrative end. You save the world. You save the girl. You are the hero of the hour. You know you are the person of importance. It kind of subverts what we come to expect from from capitalism in real life, which is that we are often forgotten and our role is our role is minor and our lives are inconsequential to the point where we are the person of ultimate consequence, especially in a Japanese role playing game. Um, and the thing for me, the so so there's so there's that's 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 part of what the that's part of uh, what the experience is offered to for me. And there's also the kind of thing is that uh, in these narratives, uh, the the thematic thing about these narratives is that there is often this kind of spiritual existential element to it, where it's often a uh, uh, the uh, you know the character arcs move with the character growth, not necessarily in a completely correlated way, as we as we talked about on Twitter with Final Fantasy VII, Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you know, so it's just like the idea is that you know by playing the game, it's like we move these characters towards like this kind of a state of 
of of spiritual ascension of some sort not in terms of like literally ascending to heaven but in terms of like in terms of like under in terms of understanding their selves in terms of resolving their conflicts and that sort of thing and the games don't necessarily like make a narrative connection between literally like literal murder and these things but they correlate in a way that might be impactful to the player and uh, by the time you've got to level 99 Cloud has also uh, resolved his, his his problems with his past and his identity and all this nonsense. You know? Yeah, so more he's, like he's... level forty five, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to I want to press I want to press you a little bit, Austin, just, just a tiny bit. We because 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 yeah. Austin, I'm, I'm sh- I showed you glitch hikers before. We were, t- we were talking about exceptional games before, and I said you should probably play glitch hikers, right? I'm and just I showed- gonna say I still haven't played it. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's it, it, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but but I mean, I can even talk about it, and then you'll know what it is. But I mean, um, because we were talking about that before, um, and yesterday we showed it on the Warp Door game stream. Right, and I was talking with Chris, and, and I was talking with Hannah, and, and we were talking about the, this game because because you're talking about about are these 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 JRPGs as existentialist texts, right? Um, and 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 what, and what I'm assuming are. when you huh? I'm what just saying it? many of them are. Okay, so so, so or a at least lot of they them can are, be right? read that and, way. And, and and what I'm assuming when you say that is basically that 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 based on their um, I'm gonna use a freaky term when I say diegetic, it just means things that you describe. <laughs> things you describe at words when I use that. But I mean, basically, this is the idea that, okay, these are using text, right? So they're using text bubbles. They're, they're speaking a lot. There's no word. Yes. This, this is more on, on people, what they say um, and what descriptions are than their actions, than, than, their, than the actions that you see, right? Um, and, and, but, but Glitch Hikers is, is the opposite. Um, Glitch Hikers is, quote, unquote, mimetic, right? Which means that it's more about action. So the Glitch Hikers is existentialist text because it's concerned with the act of driving as an existentialist text. It's understanding mm-hmm. that, that what does it mean when we sit there on a road and just drive in a straight line for an hour? And then, and, and when you do that, there's something so particularly somewhat useless about that. It feels so, it's so repetitive at the same time. It feels so empty to just sit there and keep your hand on the gas, right? Um, it might and have been is, the thing I called unsatisfying yeah, well, before. But, but the thing about that is that what Glitch Hackers does, which is which is important, I think it's important, is, is, is that by doing this, it reveals it back to you. This is what I was talking about, about being self-aware, that games that reflect your own actions back to you. It's an existentialist text, particularly because um, it, by, by sitting there, especially with people, what they say also, but this act of driving, in a sense, you start to be aware of, like, well, what am I doing here? What, what's the purpose of, of, of this kinds of weird straight line that I keep rowing on, you know, with some turns here and there? Um, but, but I'm I guess I guess I guess I guess I'm trying to I guess I'm amusing about the differences between those particular things and because because the thing about JRPGs is that is that I'm wondering if they're also existentialist as well in their in their system in in their progression because you because you because did you would you say that perhaps JRPGs make us aware of the kinds of systems that we do because there are lots of metrics right lots of numbers lots of leveling up like Stefan said um, can those things also be existentialist can those things also be something that can reveal stuff back to us maybe um, coincidentally okay. I think, uh, and I, I, that's what I was saying earlier, how these things are maybe correlated, but not necessarily like, uh, um, not necessarily explicitly connected. Um, and it's just kind of like the, the correlation between, between cloud leveling up and uh, the correlation between cloud leveling up and the, uh, and, the, and the narrative arc that he goes through feels, kind of feels impactful to the player, even though it's not necessarily designed that way. I mean, granted, this is just how games go. As an RPG goes on, you become higher level and higher strength. And as a story goes on, characters, you know, go through conflicts and resolve conflicts and that sort of, at least in a tradition, at least in a traditional sense of like five act, three act, whatever, point A to point B storytelling that, uh, that, that JRPG is often exercise in. And um, uh, what was I going to say? So, so if, 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 if it reflects those things back to us in a way that's supposed to, uh, if it reflects those things back to us, it does. It, it does so in a most in a largely coincidental way. I would say. I would say that that their JRPGs are mostly diegetically existentialist texts, and uh, and perhaps you could throw some criticism mm-hmm. at them for not using systems to to reflect existentialism rather than text. But honestly, I find that kind of I find that that type of criticism mostly useless, frankly. So, <laughs> so, 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 well, I mean, this is the thing that it's, a, it's still effective, right? Is let Stephen let Stephen get in here, yeah. Yep, totally. Oh no, I, I was just laughing. <laughs> I, so, I think it's fair either way. I, I, I defer to your authority in this. Subject. We have about I, I eight minutes. There... Eight minutes left. Pardon? Okay. Um, so I'll try to be brief. Uh, with regards to whether leveling up can be can can represent an existentialist narrative, can break out of uh, just the uh, just I say the the mundane capitalist cycle. I might point to games like Demon Souls or something because or or Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Because leveling up in that game carries a 
a, a sinister connotation where you're you're expanding human souls in order to gain power. Um, you're you're tra trading the souls to a demon in order to become a demon yourself. Uh, it's kind of revealed subtly or discreetly, but this is what's happening over the game. This is demon uh, souls, and not game, dark souls. Yeah, in Dark Souls, on the other hand, you there, there's a there, there's a a number that's humanity, and you can collect humanity as you go through the game. You can pick it up off of dead bodies. You can use it from items, or you can just farm it from from rats. Unusually enough, uh, rotten rats in the sewers are the biggest source of humanity. So I think that says something about uh, Lordran. But humanity, in a sense, is a, is another resource. is another form of wealth you can collect and grow stronger from. It's a uh, it's its effects are largely uh, discrete, so you have to find out what the statistic actually is uh, by playing the game tons and by experimenting. And uh, and Dark Souls has a has a few more uh, stats that you can level up that are kind of like that. There's poise, which a lot of people think is kind of useless. And I I think there's something in Dark Souls too, but I can't remember off the top of my head. That's that's that uh that plays into that as well. So I want to kind of sum things up. Jeremiah Taylor is like, I am so confused by this talk. So I want to see if I can try to summarize this talk. And I have a prov provocation that might blow it wide open. Um, we've established this idea that there are a lot of systems that permeate through all of video games. Um, and the capitulation of it is the level up system. The level up system is a capitalist system inherently. And that that kind of emotion that evol that involves how the player interacts with a system that just consumes all of this like uh, XP, cash, uh, just level up statistics is very uh, is very dehumanizing for the world around it. Um, so because these capitalist systems are very permeative through video games, I want to know where does that lie and how does that function within a fighting game system. A, f a fighting game? Like, Tekken? Like, like, to just change the whole script on it. Um, like, you have... <laughs> we've been doing a lot of level-up videos about, like, how to level up fastest. Uh, right now, I'm playing a video of Street Fighter that is how to make the best combos with Dudley. Uh, you know, um... I was wondering actually, if we wanted to explore some, that. Just as, go, you yeah. know, if, just to give that five minutes, uh, if as somebody who actually plays fighting games in the in the community, um, I would say that the image, if nothing else, that the fighting game community tries to represent is is uh, um, I, th I don't think combos are a good way to go here. No offense. Um, sure, if you got the, a better the, suggestion. Uh, the, I think um, the, the 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 image of fighting games that the fighting game community tries to represent is that they are almost entirely uh, is that they are almost entirely meritocratic. Which is largely true. There is a, you know, there is always the, there is the truth that that players used to, you know, like players that were good always used to be bad. That's always true. And there's, you know, and and there's uh, so there is the amount of like the amount of time that you put into learning the game, the amount of time that you put into learning the systems, understanding matchups, understanding the how space works between the characters and that sort of thing. If you put that kind of work into a game, you'll learn. You know, you'll. Um, then you'll eventually become good at it, and uh, so, uh, so, so that's yeah. so, so that's worth noting. I think it's um, so. Then you can actually line those up because uh, we have meritocratic culture lining up with capitalist economics and capitalist systems to create well, that American dream that you can pull yourself up if you work um, hard and believe in yourself, right? Or am I, is my, that my too much of a leap? There's no there's no uh, getting around it, so to speak. There's no there's no amount of privilege that you can have in the real world that will make you good at fighting games. Well, there is there are certain <laughs> natural skills you can have like the, the, Does there anyone are some natural jump in there on are that? some natural skills you can have yeah, like I, I like can, uh... like and a hand eye coordination for example, but those are just you know, I mean those are the kind of things that people get better at as they play video games. Uh, I'm not. I don't want to agree too much with the with the narrative of fighting games, for example, because for example, what character you pick can often determine your level of success as well, <laughs> which is you know, which is a which is a huge problem of its own. But that's a completely different discussion. But my point being that um, DW uh, in chat says say? fight sticks are expensive. Fight sticks <laughs> are expensive. Although the other thing being that fight sticks don't necessarily determine whether you're going to win or not. Although it's worth noting that people will try and tell you that fight sticks are the better way to play, regardless of whether they are or not. Sometimes pad works better. Sometimes hitbox works better. But sorry, completely. Yeah, God, just, you really. God, why yeah. did you give uh, me this five minutes I, before the end of the talk? I, I did that on purpose. I, I, this I is would, a huge um, topic. 
Uh, if, um, I, if I, well, well here's, here's the thing, Solon. So is, let me take I'm, a few minutes on that, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I, I was talking to TJ, and, and TJ says that, that if you if that if you want to keep this going just for a little longer, that's totally okay, just so you know, Solon, in case you, it's totally your choice of what you want to do. Oh, and also, um, Steven, uh, I mean, you can stay if you want to, but you can also go if you want to, since, yeah, 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 since yeah, we've so, blown up a totally different system. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I'm um, happy here. <laughs> happy. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I love you, Steve. <laughs> Let me. Okay, okay. Would I be able to just say, with regards to the uh, the fighting games, I yep. would say what Morbert said in chat, where uh, as you get better at a fighting game, you learn all the combos, and you're able to pull them out um, much much easier. That's just like literal experience. That that's that's classic experience that we're used to by repeating a thing and getting good at it and becoming more experienced at it. It's not a it's not a metric. It's not quantified. It's not a, right. a resource or what a form is the of cost wealth of that you it, collect. Though? Pardon? What is the cost? Time. Exactly. It's, it's mostly time. So if nothing okay. else, um, aside from the growing issue of the downloadable content characters, um, which is, I mean, you might have heard about the Kokonoe debacle, or uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's an entire other issue that we could talk about. Like, uh, like, you know, the fact that three of the best characters in King of Fighters 13 are DLC characters, or the fact that when Kokonoe came out by herself on Blaze Blue, she was by far the best character to the point where they absolutely had to develop a patch. And some, tem and some tournaments temporarily banned her until the patch came out. Um, that's an entirely separate issue. But, uh, but the thing about fighting games is that um, you can't really measure... Uh, if fighting games have any kind of relationship to capitalism, they kind of have the honest relationship where the amount of work that you put into it is not always indicative of your reward. Just because, I mean, I spend an hour a day practicing combos, practicing setup and spacing in King of Fighters 13. I spend at least an hour a day playing that game just because I like it so damn much, you know. Um, but but if I um, but just because I do that doesn't mean I win, you know. Um, I still, you know, I'm still a terrible King of Fighters player, uh, but you know. So, but, it, Zalani, if you got something going on there, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, if it's okay for me to to just sort of interject, um, particularly, um, fighting games and, and capital is is actually a lot harder than other things. <laughs> I wanna, it's I wanna, so I hard. Just, I'm, it was I, a really I wanna, mean I question. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a well. This thing, it's a weird question, and there there are reasons, particularly why it's a weird question. Um, in, in some sense, um, and it has something to do with with the with the system of fighting games, particularly. Um, the the, the way that fighting games are so peculiar, particularly mm -hmm. they, 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 the the way that they present agency in a way. Um, that's very very peculiar. Um, and very instant, and 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 there's something kind of weird about that. Um, I'm just thinking. It's, it's it's weird thing. So so you're, you're mentioning that 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 fighting games in itself seem seem to you you get the idea when you play fighting games that that that, that they don't that they seem to really kind of embody this idea of meritocracy a little better. Um, and that's a weird question because Austin actually Austin in the chat talked about how you know how many people have even time to even train in the first place, right? So there's a bunch of external things. What I think is important when talking about fighting games because the fighting I think when you look at the fighting community when you watch the when you watch fighting HGC streams and stuff, you could tell that that the culture is very very interested um, and very very devoted to this understanding of a meritocracy of skill. This understanding there's this understanding that if they he, if that person won the tournament, it's because they worked hard for it. You know, and and there's this ideology of hard work, particularly in there. Um, I think it's just. I guess one thing I'm, I just want to note some things as amusing. One thing I want to note is that fighting games are really interested in self improvement, almost in. I, I don't want to say almost in a. Jeez, um, they're, in, they're they're interested in they're interested in self improvement as systems in a way that I think is different from other games. Um, I don't know about other games where you practice, where there's a where there's a room particularly that has no win or lose state, where you are just there to to in to just do inputs and responses to just interact with yourself right you're the only person in the training room right it's just you and and if you want to turn the computer you can but if you want to turn it on and practice combos basically you're just kind of sitting there playing with yourself in a sense right um and and this is this is the this is the idea that fighting games approach self-improvement um in, in a very in a way that i think is a lot deeper than other games and i think i think that that might give I might give a, a, a sort of seeming illusion, particularly that is meritocracy. But I, I think I think when, when we approach things, I think it's worth thinking about the external pressures of what it takes to play a fighting game, what it takes to have a fighting game, particularly other than the obvious things of you know you, should, you, should, you need to buy the game and buy the DLC characters and such. But even that this understanding of self improvement is weird, right? Um, this understanding of self actualization. This is a question yeah. of um, right. So this, this idea of of you know this understanding of of how much time I got to put into this, how much time I'm able to. How much time am I willing to, particularly based on other things and external factors, that kind of thing? Um, I, I, it feels like a non-answer. I apologize. It's just like it is a I weird have a thing. Thought, I, I thought those things were worth noting. I have a I thought. Guess. Coming off of Austin, 
uh, uh, Austin, you just put this in chat saying that the best American players are incredibly poor, uh, which makes me think of this idea of maybe the uh, the capitalist systems that we are kind of looking at where uh, the meritocracy is based on, on time and ability, uh, but also this overwhelming creative urge that the fighting game community brings uh, to just do, by any ways possible uh, hack together a little bit of electrical engineering and make your own fight stick out of uh, cardboard boxes and tubes. Um, yeah. Like that's the and, spirit and the of the fighting game that, community, is, right? The other thing is, is that, is that they said the best American players are very poor. Uh -huh. Um, on average, I mean, there there is a new influx of of white players who are um, who are better off. A, okay. a lot of them are at least. Yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty of there's an influx of, for lack of better terminology, white nerds with computer science degrees. Um, I, you know, yeah, who, I see who what are, you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, there are you know there are some of those coming into the community after 2009, but historically, um, historically the fighting game community <laughs> is is poor people of color. And yeah, frankly, that is still true. Is. It is still mostly poor people of color in, in the United States. And uh, so I think that kind of throws a wrench a, l a little bit into observing, like, into throwing at least a straight capitalist read of so fighting what if, or the community. Because because the thing about it is that the best American, like I said, the I best American players agree. are still really poor. So what if, if, what if we take this, their tournament winnings. if we take Sorry. this engagement of capitalism and flip it and say that this is a meritocratic look into a capitalist system in spite of it. Well, um, so, so, okay. Like, I, in, I'm, sorry, even, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Even in spite of the... Um, that it, it's kind of like you are, you're still achieving the, this kind of big dream that even you can do it if you work hard and believe in yourself in spite of all of these other problems um, and all of the things in the way, all of the barriers of entry that you'd usually have. The fighting game community... <laughs> embodies that idea of like you you can still do it it's well, uh, well, it's an engagement with capitalist systems um so okay, if i can say something yeah really quickly yeah, okay, okay, so, okay, so, okay, okay, okay so this particularly so if, if the american fgc is particularly for people of color then that means that we want to we want to be able to analyze and talk about capital um in relation to quote unquote race Race, yep. I, say, I, say, I, I use quotes particularly because he seems simplistic, but it's an understanding of of, of what is um what 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 is what is the um Especially in the United States, because it's just so scary. So, 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 if we think about understanding meritocracy in relation to "quote unquote" race, we normally think that black people, particularly, and that, that, that's usually what I know of. And, and um, I don't want to generalize to people of color, particularly, but we can say that black people are uh, systematically prevented um, and um, from reaching particular sort of social mobility. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's, it's this understanding that, and 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 there are lots of ways to do this. So understanding that that um, that black men, particularly, are have huge, huge numbers of unemployment more than mm -hmm. white men. Right, and there are particular reasons for this understanding that you know, if I am a black person in the United States, and if I smoke, you know, a joint of weed, and a cow catches me, I'm probably gonna go to jail for a few years. Whereas a teen is probably just gonna, you know, maybe go, maybe you know, get a slap on the wrist or something like that. So, so, so these kind of systematic things are important because because they they affect the the cultural, um, the, the sort of the sort of cultural consciousness, particularly um, of of what what people will call Black America, particularly. And I think that really does affect how how folks um. How folks particularly, because if we think about how that affects Black America, then we would know that that affects how the fighting community um, is pretty much um, sort of constructed. And, and it means that if the fighting community is very interested in this idea of meritocracy of reaching something, we can say that perhaps it's because um, particularly Blacks in the United States are usually prevented from it for historically since 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 the since the the, the birth of the United States in general. Absolutely, right? and that's exactly why I think it's a very physical engagement with the real capitalist systems, especially in the U.S. and especially in uh, similar Western ideology regions. Like, it's a very physical Actually, engagement uh, with it, isn't it? Hello, this is the voice of God speaking. Hello, voice Please of God. Please listen for a moment. Ah, yes. Ah. Actually, this is your streamer, Logical, sitting here behind the scenes, keeping everything running smoothly. Um, so there's actually been a lot of interest in the chat and among the people here talking about MOBAs and fighting games and culture and class and all those mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And I'm actually going to submit the idea that we do a new panel on it. I personally know uh, some academics who are studying exactly that. I've got a paper sitting on my desktop on exactly that topic, which is going to be published soon. And I submit that we set up a schedule, get together, and do a whole panel on that. 
How well, does that well, sound? Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's a panel on Saturday about it, particularly. There's a panel on games under capitalism. Although that one is going to be particular, it's probably going to talk about things outside of games, social things around the game, not necessarily think, the games. I think Logical is suggesting that we move this topic uh, into okay, its own we, section. Okay. And wrap up. Uh, if we move, <laughs> I'm going to give a closing thought, and then I have to go. Yes. Um, I. Um, We've had so, a lot of fun. So the fighting game community, I think it's worth. It's also worth reading the, how the fighting game community functions because the thing about it is that we, when we talk about the fighting game community, we tend to see it as a system of competition, which is logical. I mean, people go to tournaments and they fight true. each other. But but that's what I'm getting to. That's mm. the thing is is that we see that we see the we see the 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 uh, the uh, the culture of competition and that sort of thing. But the thing about it is that it really is a very strong culture of support. You go to a you go to a what is what what might be called an arcade in modern times because you know like I go to Xanadu or I go to DJ Hoshin's house uh, so that I can learn how better to play King of Fighters, and I give money to Xanadu so that there is a venue for these games to be played and so that the top players are rewarded for their effort and that sort of thing and, and things like that. It's 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 largely a system of you know like in, in terms of how money flows in the FGC, the money that is spent in the FGC is spent in a way that is meant to support community. You know, like that is it's it's like there's there's this very it's it's almost like it's almost like a kind of it's almost like a kind of taxation where it's like you can participate in this community, but to participate in this community, you have to you have to contribute to it, and you have to contribute not just your you not just your participation and what you what we might call your ludic labor or whatever the hell, um, you you not just not just that, but you also have to contribute some money to the you know to the venue or or you know to. Uh, you, you have to help other people out. You got to drive people. You got to give money to the venue and that sort of thing. Yeah. You have to. You just. You have to be a contributing member of the community. And you know, at least a, in the local D, at least in the local DMV FTC, the people who don't contribute are the people who get cast out. Yeah, you know, as like, a as a person who got his start in broadcasting note, as I a end, fighting like, game tournament organizer and fighting game streamer for Seattle, I know quite a bit about that. Uh, like I said, I. I Let's do a new panel uh, talking about some of these topics, and I think people will really enjoy it. I uh, also have a panel that is in the planning stage, actually, with some FGC folks. Uh, Dacid Rowe, Team Laws, who is key to the Seattle community, and l let's see what we work out. I think that would be great. Yeah, totally. If, if I could be if around for that, panel, I would love to talk to Dacid Rowe. Okay. <laughs> On that note, I, 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 we are all about to get gonged out of this panel. So, <laughs> Stephen, thank you, you for you've joining got, us. You've got 30 seconds. Hmm? Steven, uh, thank you. Me? Clean it up Steven, for us. Steven, no sorry. Worries. Thanks for having me. Where can we find more <laughs> of your work, Steven? Normally Rascal. Normally Rascal. Or thank at, you. at Byronic M. That's my favorite thing. A at Byronic M on Twitter. It's, it's a robot. Yeah. Look for it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a robot. Yeah. An adorable little blue robot. So that's me. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I guess y'all are going to go into an exciting stream about the yep. FGC on, uh, on Indy 4. So I'll see you all around. Thank you. Are you well, guys uh, great. The, the fighting game stream, uh, we need to schedule that for when our additional guests will be available because mm -hmm. we have yeah. a few that are in Seattle who will need to physically be here for that. Uh, yeah, so oh, okay. But happens, definitely watch the Twitter, and we will make sure that people know when that's going to yep. be, and we'll email all of to our get everybody set up. is over Twitter. <laughs> it's, <Excellent. laughs> it's absolutely been a blast. All right. So, talk to you all later. Thank you. All right. Thanks, yeah, everyone, who's been sticking around, too, in chat. Uh, we've got just amazing people. Um, it seemed like there was oh, – I'm trying to scroll back up to it. Uh, there was an Argentinian dev as well who was very interested in putting together a panel on the uh, labor forces that are involved in developing in Argentina and what kind of uh, what kind of games actually come out of Argentina because of the economic forces involved in the country, yeah. which is really cool. That's amazing. We'd love to create a platform for that. And so uh, that's that's something that we'll talk about on Twitter, and they'll uh, we can email at a what is it indie three at a six productions dot com. Correct, indie three at a six productions dot com. Mm, hosting professional, uh, that's awesome. So we really want to see that kind of stuff. That's that's the stuff that is just making this whole thing worthwhile is having big conversations, having them go over time, um, and giving people space to just project themselves. Uh, right now, we are going to transition from the panel to another uh, indie trailer showcase where we're going to talk about games. If any of you guys want to just hang out and watch the stream, help me talk about games, Zolani, Steven, Austin, I think you've got to go, Austin, right? 
We're uh, we're also. Yep, I'm 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 getting out of here. Yeah, you get uh, out of here. I might, have to, I might have to head out too because I need I need to also talk to some people for the next panel that's coming at seven o'clock. That's, that's true. Uh, I, I don't know if I can say around. That's mm-hmm. that's, oh, that's fine. Um, Diabetes okay, yeah, might cool. also be joining in to help co-host the the um the trailers. That'd be cool. So that that'd, that'd be, be something to look hot. forward to. Just gotta hit him up real quick. Uh, for me, it's here in Ireland. It's getting quite late, so I might just. Out now. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, late yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Do, do it. Do exactly late. what you have to do because we've we've gone like 15 minutes over accidentally, which is, <laughs> which which is which is fine because you guys did a great job. 